Welcome to two Bengals Breakdown by Chat Sports. We're about to discuss that Saquon Barkley trade rumor that I'm sure is a big reason why you clicked on today's video. But first, I have some bad news. We are losing the AFC North subs gained battle this month. We are one behind the Ravens, which is uh, fairly embarrassing, and even more behind the Browns and the Steelers. I do not like that. I don't see any reason why our Bengals channel can't be just as big as our Browns and Steelers and Ravens ones, but we have to get more subscribers. So if you want free Bengals videos and you want to continue to find ways to beat the AFC North, hit that sub button right now. Let's get into the Saquon Barkley trade idea from fan side. They pitched a Barkley to the Bengals idea, which certainly sounds fun, especially if you play Madden. That's one hell of an offense. Background here is that Saquon Barkley was tagged by the New York Giants. He has not yet signed that franchise tag amid contract talks that have been, I'll say rough, uh, unideal for the parties involved. He allegedly rejected a $14 million per year offer that was pulled off the table. Now it's back on the table. But the crux of the issue is less about the average per year and more about the structures and the guarantees which we will get into, but Barkley looked more like the guy that he was supposed to be when the Giants drafted him with the number two overall pick, which, you know what, in hindsight, no, they, they would not do that again. He had almost 300 carries last year. His presence on the ground was a massive reason why the Giants had the success that they did on offense, which honestly wasn't the best, but it was still enough to make the playoffs and even take down the Minnesota Vikings in a playoff game. Much improved over not great 2022-2020 campaigns. He was, of course, heavily banged up back in 2020. Uh, the passing volume actually, volume went up. Efficiency dipped a little bit this year. Part of just the offensive style there. But Barkley was the workhorse and the best playmaker by a pretty safe margin on the Giants last year. And if you put him with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Irv Smith and Tyler Boyd, that is the best offensive skill grouping, I think, in the NFL, which you could already argue is the case with the Bengals having Joe Mixon. Now, make no mistake here, the Bengals would not be keeping Joe Mixon alongside Saquon Barkley. They would be trading Mixon. And fans side had got halfway with a trade idea that they put together as part of this idea that they had. Bengals, of course, get Saquon Barkley. Giants get Joe Mixon and a draft pick. Now, my biggest issue here is fan-sided didn't quite finish the project, so to speak. Uh, incomplete is the grade in school. What draft pick am I moving? You can't just say draft pick. Is it a second rounder? Is it a sixth rounder? Is it a third? Like, Where does that draft pick fall in? Because I want to keep my top 100 picks because I'm going to have to go cheap at other positions as I build out my roster and have higher paid guys like Chase, Higgins, and Burrow, which right now is super cheap, won't be super cheap in two or three years. So without knowing that draft pick, a little tough for me to get a good feel for just how feasible it would be from the Bengals side of things. So would you trade for Saquon Barkley? Much more on this topic to come. But it's, this is today's pinned comment. T for trade, P for pass. It is the pinned comment. So if an ad happens to play here on YouTube, you can just ignore the ad and go vote at the pinned comment. T for trade, P for pass. The other major issue here beyond just the trade details and the cost involved of, of the draft capital is the physical cost of the contract. Seems like Saquon Barkley wants some pretty big guaranteed money uh, in terms of what he wants on us. It's understandable. He's a running back. This is his one great shot at getting some long-term security. So the money does matter here. From a per-year perspective, that $14 million price tag is actually pretty good. Uh, if, if that is, of course, true and accurate, that would be third among backs in the NFL. Christian McCaffrey already got traded once. We're talking about Joe Mixon being $12 million. If you, you would be able to structure the deal, the Bengals would, in terms of the year one cap hit this year, if you did it before the trade deadline extended Saquon Barkley, it would probably be less in terms of the cap hit for Saquon this year than what it would be for Joe Mixon. The problem is the guaranteed money. We don't have much information on what Saquon Barkley wants, but 
he probably wants a decent amount of guaranteed figures. Probably upwards of the $30, $35 million fully guaranteed because that sets him up for long-term security. And the reason why in the end it's probably a no for Cincinnati is because of that. Do you want to pay a back big money when you want to pay your two receivers and your quarterback large amounts of dollars? I don't think that's the shrewd play for the Bengals. So it's a fun idea if you could make it a one-year rental of Saquon Barkley with a low draft pick going back to the Giants, then yeah, okay, I could have some interest in that category. But paying him long-term, I'm not sure that's what the Bengals want to do. Now, we do have a deal for you guys. The Bengals hats are still on sale. Tons of styles, colors, fits, brims, etc. A big, big option there. They've also got, or selection, I should say, not option. They've also got the t-shirt hat combo, which is still available on sale, and the Joe Burrow style headband. Maybe great for your kids. Links in the comments section and the description of today's show. It's chatsports.com slash Bengals hats. Let's go to Joe Mixon now, as this kind of tied directly into the Saquon Barkley conversation. CBS Sports had an idea for a Joe Mixon pay cut. The Athletic, again, as you mentioned on a previous video, reported that a pay cut was possible, if not a likely ask of it coming for Mixon and the Bengals. They had posed the two-year $16 million deal, which would be around 4 point, we'll say 4, eh, 4.5 million dollars less than what Mixon's due over the next two years. He's due about $10 million in cash. What I would be very curious of with this particular deal is how it would be structured. Does Mixon get eight and eight? If so, you know, you're only really saving $2 million because you'd probably cut him next year anyway. Does he get more like six and 10? If so, okay, that starts to make a bit more sense for the Bengals and saving some money. I don't have a great feel for what they would actually do. Mixon's numbers do not stand out. Volume-wise, they do. But efficiency-wise, that's that's not exactly very good. Although I do think you would be able to say, hey, it was the offensive line's fault, not Mixon's fault. What the Bengals have in their corner, in terms of the ability to get Mixon to say yes to a pay cut, is the threat of leverage. They don't really have the leverage on the roster right now. You know, they've got Travion Williams, they've got Chase Brown and Chris Evans, but I don't think Mixon would be intimidated by those guys replacing him. But the presence of free agents like Dalvin Cook, Ezekiel Elliott, etc., going to Mixon and saying, hey, Joe, we've been super supportive of you through all the off-the-field stuff right now. You should take a pay cut or else we're going to go sign Cook and Elliott. That would probably be the the hardball play by the Bengals in an effort to get Mixon to say yes to said pay cut. So will that end up happening? Get your predictions in the comment section. Y for yes, it will. N for no, it will not. I'm sure we'll know at some point well before week one. But let's see what you guys are predicting right now. Let's look way ahead now to the offseason. T. Higgins, a potential franchise tag. The Athletics' Nate Tice says the Bengals should at least tag Higgins next year which I think is the fallback option. I will make note, the early projected franchise tag number for receivers is just under $23 million, which maybe sets a good baseline for what Higgins would like to get in a contract extension. A, to be clear, the Higgins extension will wait until after the Bengals pay Joe Burrow, but I agree with a lot of what Nate Tice had to say. He said, I would tag him and then figure it out later. Try and figure out the extension here, but at least have that tag. We've seen other teams do this. The Bucks did it with Chris Gowan if they signed Mike Evans. It's not like it's the end of the world. I think the tag is very possible. I think Hagen's going to get a pretty penny on the open market like he absolutely would if he made it that far. So I think the Bengals should find any means possible because, or to, to get him because he is so important to what they do. So what would you guys like to do with T. Higgins? There are three different options here you guys can go. P for pay, F for franchise tag him, or L for let leave. You guys can sound off for me in the comment section. Your preferred path with Higgins, pay, franchise tag, or let him leave. I would simply pay T. Higgins. Uh, I think he is an instrumental part of the offense, and he's a damn good football player, and I want to keep those guys on my roster. He's basically been a 1,000-yard receiver 
every year he's been in the NFL. Put up very startlingly similar numbers the last two seasons, despite being a secondary option behind this guy you might have heard of in Jamar Chase. In the end, I really agree with what, to, with, with, with what Nate Tice says, so I'll end on this note. I would just pay him, Nate said. Tyler Boyd is going to be hopefully, is going to be gone. Hopefully they have a ready-made replacement for Boyd with Charlie Jones. So even if you have two expensive wide receivers, an expensive left tackle, and an expensive quarterback, you save in other areas of your roster. I have no issues with just giving him the extension he deserves. Hopefully that's what ends up happening. If it does go down, we will be sure to break down the contract for you in depth. So make sure you guys are subscribed.